from the editors of Biological Psychiatry and the Society for Biological Psychiatry. This is Biological Psychiatry Live. And I'm Dr. Tamara Gore, the social media editor. And I have with me today, Dr. Kent Barrage. Dr. Barrage, could you please introduce yourself? Uh, hi, Tamara. It's a pleasure to chat with you today. I'm Kent Barrage. I'm at the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor. And uh, my lab studies liking and wanting things for the most part. <laughs> Thanks again for joining us today. I'd like to start by asking you, what is the current understanding of the role of CRF and how stress triggers relapse and addiction? Well, CRF is famous as the stress, it's been called the master stress signal of the brain, sort of mm -hmm. command signal that can turn on for all kinds of nasty distressing st situations and thought to execute stress responses. Mm -hmm. And so um, what new understandings of CRF or the mechanisms underlying reward or relapse in addiction does your study? Uh, well, traditionally, there's been a longstanding CRF theory in addiction, and that is that CRF is activated by aversive withdrawal symptoms and other distress in life, and that it creates an aversive distressing state to have mm -hmm. CRF activated in the brain. This is especially in addiction neuroscience thought to have happened when the central nucleus of the amygdala CRF system is activated and its connections to the bed nucleus of the strea terminalis. Together, those two structures form what's often called the extended amygdala. And activation of CRF systems in this extended amygdala traditionally has been thought to drive the aversive state, which makes a person, if they're a drug addict, perhaps relapse into drugs, or if they're a binge eater, perhaps relapse into binge eating as attempts to hedonically self-medicate by consuming sensory rewards to try to alleviate the distressing situation that CRF has caused. That's the classical um, addiction neuroscience view of CRF in the brain. And how did you, um, what techniques did you use in your study to sort of tease this apart? Well, our project was, was pioneered by Hannah Baumgartner, who's a senior PhD student in our lab, and she's about to become Dr. Baumgartner in a few months. Congratulations. She, yes. And what she did was to optogenetically activate specifically CRF neurons in either central nucleus of amygdala or bed nucleus of the strata terminalis or the nucleus accumbens in three different groups of rats. She used uh, a Cree line of rats that has, expresses Cree specifically in neurons that are making CRF. This is a line of, of pre CRH Cree rats that was developed by Bob Messing's lab at the University mm -hmm. of Texas and kindly allowed us to use them. Hannah would turn on these CRF systems as rats had the opportunity to work for sugar rewards. They could work, say, for two sugar rewards, and she would turn on the CRF system when it, the rat worked for one of the two rewards, but not the other. Mm -hmm. And you could see whether this caused the rat to prefer the CRF linked reward or to avoid that CRF linked reward. Mm -hmm. Also, she would test the rats when they were working in what's called a progressive ratio test that measures the intensity of incentive motivation to see if CRF activation would increase their incentive motivation or decrease it. And she finally also asked whether the CRF neuronal activation itself, all by itself, was positive for the rat or negative. Would the rat avoid it as the classical neuroscience theory predicts? predicts, or would the rat actually seek out its CRF activation? She did all these things and got surprising answers. Yeah, tell me more. What did she find? It was a very elegant design. What did, what, what, what did she find? Well, what she found, to the surprise, I think, of the traditional theory, mm -hmm. was that if she activated CRF systems in either the central nucleus of the amygdala or in the nucleus accumbens, she got the same kind of thing, which was an increase in incentive motivation. Mm -hmm. The rats actually wanted their CRF activation. They would work to self-stimulate the laser in the central nucleus or in the nucleus accumbens. Mm -hmm. And if she paired that activation of CRF in central amygdala or nucleus accumbens with a sugar reward, the rats actually preferred and exclusively chased only the sugar reward that was paired with the CRF activation. They ignored the sugar reward that did not have the CRF activation. All of this suggested that the CRF activation had a positive tone for them if it was the central nucleus of the amygdala or the nucleus accumbens. And finally, if she did the intensity of motivation task, the progressive ratio or breakpoint task, she found that she could double the breakpoint, double the intensity of the expressed incentive motivation when she turned on the CRF systems. 
all of this is turning on CRF in an incentive motivation way. All of this would be similar to say, activating the mesolimbic dopamine system or nucleus accumbens um, that's famous for reward motivation. But here we're getting this reward motivation signature by activating the CRF system in those two structures. She did find to, in accordance with the traditional CRF view, she did find, Hannah found, that in the bed nucleus of the stria terminalis, the BNST, if she activated CRF there, the rats avoided that stimulation. They didn't want that stimulation, and they would avoid a sugar that was paired with that BNST sugar um, CRF activation. So this fits the notion that activation of CRF in the bed nucleus is aversive, but to our surprise, activating the CRF in the bed nucleus did not make the rats hedonically self-medicate by consuming sucrose. Instead, they avoided the sucrose that was paired with the bed nucleus activation, and it actually suppressed their incentive motivation in the breakpoint tests. It suppressed their motivation to about one half that it normally would have been without the BSD activation. So rather than rush to hedonically self-medicate their CRF state, Mm -hmm. it actually reduced their motivation to consume the hedonic rewards, this aversive state. Wow. That could have you know, robust clinical implications. What are the clinical implications that might stem from your study in terms of um, stress and the promotion of relapse and addiction? Or it sounds like in eating disorders as well, it could also be relevant to that. Well, I think perhaps so. I think the first clinical application is a better understanding of the nature of addiction processes and the nature of CRF participation in addiction processes. You know, sometimes it seems so plausible that we have an understanding of what a system is doing in the brain psychologically, that it almost has to be that way. But the brain sometimes surprises us and tells us, no, it's operating by different rules. I think that's what we're seeing here, yeah. that the role of CRF is very different. And in one sense, this might make sense of certain observations, like it's not just nasty stresses that trigger relapse in drug addiction or alcoholism or binge eating. It's also even good stresses, like winning, winning the lottery or getting a promotion or having a big event in life. These can also sometimes precipitate binges and relapses. It's kind of famous, I think, in 12-step programs that any emotion, even strong positive emotion, can be dangerous. Strong positive things activate CRF systems endogenously too, just like nasty things. So this may be a mechanism for why happy stresses can be dangerous in addiction, just like nasty stresses. Yeah, actually, as a psychiatrist, you're helping me understand something that I've often wondered about over the years, um, of, which is why good stressors also lead to even anxiety and other 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 clinically relevant uh, issues. So um, thank you and congratulations on the publication. Well, thanks so much. And again, the, I, the congratulations really belong to Hannah Baumgartner. Congratulations, and the future doctor. Great future. Yeah. And thanks again for talking with me today. I appreciate it. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.